All right, let's go ahead and paste this in and see what happens. It's crafting my workflow. It looks like it's done. Let's go ahead and download the JSON file. I might be out of a job. Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be using Claude to craft our N8N workflows for us. Now, typically if you have an idea for a workflow, you have to sit down, map it out, it may take 10, 15 hours, and then you go and start building it in N8N or make or something like that. But today we're gonna to try something new. Claude 4 just rolled out and I wanna see if I can use it to build my workflows for me. So let's go ahead and dive on into this and one, see if it works, and two, see what it's gonna to take to make it work. By the way, if you enjoy videos like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want more free resources, you can click the link down below, head on over to my free school community where there's downloadable templates and trainings on how to build an in workflows. Now, for those of you that don't know, Claude is actually considered one of the best large language models for coding. I've used it to build calculators and widgets. Um, I've used it to build some incredible things, but I haven't really tried it to actually build complex uh, in it in workflows. And so yesterday, Claude 4 just rolled out and it includes Claude 4 Opus and Opus is actually now considered to be their best coding tool ever. So what I want to do is I want to come into Claude and I actually want to find out if Claude is going to be capable of reasoning through not only the capabilities of NADN and understanding how uh, how to structure things and where to find tools and how to call on things. Um, I want to see if it can reason on how to build the workflows, which is honestly the biggest value that I provide to companies. Uh, when I sit down and say, hey, you want this, like this is your current system and this is what you want it to be, how can we bridge that? Building the automations is actually fairly easy and straightforward once you get the hang of it. It's conceptualizing the automations that's exceptionally hard. Let's build this out step by step. First off, inside of Claude, all I wanna do is create a new project and I'm gonna name it my NADN Workflow Builder two, because I already have another, um, all in in workflow projects. And I'm going to create the project. Now, when you look at this, you're going to notice right away that there is nothing in it. There's no context. It hasn't been trained. It doesn't have a prompt or any of that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in files. Now, if you didn't know this, in in actually has an entire library of files uh, dedicated to understanding the platform, the functionality, the capability, troubleshooting, the nodes, the integrations, all of it. And so I actually want to put all of this as knowledge into this Claude project. Now I've actually already compiled all the readme files from N8N, so I'm gonna come right here to the plus sign, I'm gonna click on Google Drive, and I'm gonna drop the URL to the file itself. Now, if I walk through that, it would take me way too long. That's an entirely different video around how to use GitHub to pull the readme files and then uh, change the formats from Markdown to DocX. And so for right now, I'm just gonna show you dropping this in for context. Now that I've added knowledge of the platform itself and all the nodes and functionality, I'm gonna add in my system prompt, essentially. I've already got one, so I'm gonna add it here but we've got the overview, context, instructions, tools, examples, and SOPs and final notes, okay? So I'm gonna save these instructions. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I actually don't know how to prompt this to get the best result. So instead of trying to guess what this particular project is going to want from a prompt, I'm just gonna ask it so that I can get a framework. Please give me a framework or guidelines for crafting a prompt that will give me the best possible output for an N8N workflow build. Now what it's gonna come back with is everything that it wants based on all of the files and training that it has to build the best workflow. Cool, so now this has told me exactly what it wants from a prompt, so instead of trying to sit here and engineer it myself, I'm gonna just go to ChatGPT and I'm gonna feed it everything that I just got told about how to build a prompt. To do this, instead of dropping that entire chunk in there, I'm just gonna start a Word doc, and then I'm gonna copy and paste all of it onto the Word doc. So now we have a neatly laid out prompt instruction. I'm just gonna use uh, prompt framework. And then I'm gonna download the PDF. Coming back over to ChatGPT, I'm going to give it the PDF. So I'm just gonna write, please help me craft a prompt based on the prompt framework that I can share with my NADN workflow builder agent. I've already got my user prompt. It's not really going to matter because this will be completely different for everybody. Um, but basically I'm saying, Hey, um, this is the workflow that we want to build, um, uh, automate and summarize recent emails using AI, right? So we're going to go ahead and put this in and we're going to look for the prompt to come out. And again, none of this really matters for the specific build I'm doing. It's more about how I'm thinking about getting this built. Now, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this prompt 
and I'm gonna take it back over to my Claude project. I'm gonna come right in here. I'm gonna start a new one. I'm gonna switch over to Opus, which is the coding builder within Claude, and I'm gonna drop in my prompt. And based on this, we're gonna let it run. And as you can see, it's already started building the workflow. Now that it's complete, I'm gonna to come to the top and I'm gonna click download as JSON. And I'm gonna come over here to a new project, new workflow, and I'm gonna say import from file. And I'm gonna find my Gmail summary workflow. And there it is right there. Now, not only does it have all of the nodes, but it has instructions um, as well, walking through what else is needed and how to set it up. Now, it is worth noting, you're gonna see a lot of red nodes. You have to set them up. So we're gonna go through right now, set these all up in real time um, so that you can get a feel for it. So let's name this our Claude Gmail uh, Organizer. Okay. And so you can see right here, we've got a daily trigger at 8 a.m. It's gonna fetch unread emails. And all we have to do is double click on it and make sure that the account is set up correctly. Label name is unread. Great, that looks good. Then check if email exists. It looks like this one automatically set up if the input length is greater than zero. So we can run that in just a moment. And then we're gonna format and validate the emails. Prepare AI prompt. Now for this, I might go ahead and swap this out for just an agent. So what we'll do is we'll erase this guy right here and we'll add in a message model node. And we can change out the, the prompts here in just a moment. And then let's connect our Slack account. So we've got the right Slack account, send message to a channel and we're gonna search for Playground, this message type, this looks good. Okay, we'll come back to that in a minute. Log success to sheets. I don't have a sheet for this, so I'm gonna have to create it. All right, I've created a new sheet and we'll call this our uh, email, uh, email sheet. And I'm gonna just make sure that it's set to share. And I'm gonna come back up here, copy the top one, and put it back over in here. So by ID, let's see if we can do it by URL. That should pull it. And then the sheet, we'll do a sheet name. Actually, we'll just use it as sheet one. For sheet, we'll just leave it as sheet one, and we'll do it from list. There it is, sheet one. So it's recognized in the document. We've got our sheet, so it's all set up there. Next, we have to do the bottom line. So let's get this Slack set up, message to channel. I'm gonna do the same thing, again, for simplicity's sake. There it is right there. And we've got our message. And then log error to, once again, we're gonna use the same URL. Change this to URL. We're gonna switch this to from list. And it didn't work. There it is. And that should work right there. <clears throat> Coming back down here, we're gonna do the same thing. Basically, we're just connecting everything. All right, that's all set up. So that looks good, that looks good, that looks good. We can test this in just a few seconds here. Let's look at this really quick and see what it wanted to do for the uh, messages. So we've got system prompt and user prompt from the prepared message prior. And we might actually change this. I might I might shift over to adding another AI node instead of prepare an AI prompt. Uh, let's just first do this um, and see and see what it comes back with. So I'm, I'm gonna drop my prompt right here. Let me select a model. Let's do GPT-41 uh, mini. Let's take our system prompt and move it down. We're gonna add a system prompt right here and we're gonna change this. I don't know if this is actually what it's gonna come out to, but we're gonna try it. And we're gonna make this an expression and we're gonna use a system message for this. And then for this one, we're gonna do the same, but we're just going to fix the top here and set that up. And let's add our curly brackets. There it is. So now we've got our user prompt and I swapped those around. There we go. Now we've got our user prompt and our system prompt. 
and we're good to go on this. I'll leave all of this as is for right now. I just wanna see what it does. So let's swap this out for right now for a manual trigger. Again, just for testing. And now let's go ahead and test the workflow. All right, we got an error right away in this node. Let's see what we've got here. Invalid date time received after field. Let's see here, received after, select date time. So let's just set this. I should have set this before, but we'll set this as a fixed value. Um, but we could set a custom value if we wanted like for yesterday or something. So once again, we'll test this workflow. Cool, so it found 50 items. All right, looks like we had an error message here. So let's go back and take a look at what happened in the workflow. And if we come in here, we can see the error logs could not get parameter. So this was set to manually add them. I'm gonna switch it over to automatically. And I'm gonna do the same over here as well. I should have done this the first time. What else we've got? Same for this one. Let's set it to automatically. And then let's look at the input and output from this. We've got the user prompt and system prompt. Uh, user prompt is placed appropriately. System prompt placed appropriately. Cool. Now let's take this and actually because of the way that this is going, let's do this from, we'll say yesterday. And that will give us a little bit better way to do this. All right, our if statement is pushing everything to false. Let me come back into my OpenAI node, check my settings. And on error, let's do continue using error output. And that way we have a reason for it to go. And then let's actually drop this, uh, this node right here. And we'll have success go there, error goes down there. That should work much better. And let's go through and test it again. Cool, let's find out if this works. Let's go over to our sheet. And it looks like we had a successful run. Coming back into our Slack, you can see here daily email summary and the message content is essentially missing. So let's change what it is that we are using. It looks like none of these variables are pulling. So what I want is I wanna swap this for, this guy right here. And let's test this again. There we go. Now we can see a complete breakdown um, of all of the emails that need to be addressed. So with that being said, we've now got a workflow that is semi-working um, and it's a definitely a starting point. So I think at this point it's fair to say that it's not going to replace guys like me just yet, but it's definitely getting close. And I think that this could be used really easily as a starting point. So as long as you have enough context around your project, what inputs you're wanting, where the data is coming from, how you want it to be processed, what you want the output to look like, and any... Um, and any rules or functions you want within that, I think that you could still use Claude as a starting point. Um, and then once you get it into something like this, it gives you the ability to start playing with it and adjusting how you want it to go. Uh, so guys, if you found that valuable, do me a favor, go ahead and give me a like and subscribe. Don't forget to check out my free school community. The link is down below. There's templates in there and guides on using Innate to build workflows. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.